the correct way to represent a coordinate bond is like this. Uh, just a second. All of this will remain the same because it was a part of the ammonia. But we'll make an arrow over here to show that it was nitrogen that gave both the electrons. So that's how we correctly represent a coordinate bond. So the ammonium ion will have a tetrahedral shape because you can see there are four bonding pairs and zero lone pairs. So initially ammonia had a trigonal pyramidal shape because it had one lone pair and three bonding pairs. But, uh, but um, in the case of the ammonium ion, there are four bonding pairs of electrons, right? One, two, three, and four. There are no lone pairs on the nitrogen, which is the central atom. So that's why it has a tetrahedral shape. So uh, when we talked about AlCl3, now actually two AlCl3 molecules can bond together like this. They can they can bond together through coordinate bonding. It's a very interesting bond, uh, type of bonding. So Cl. Actually, I, I need some bigger diagrams for this because I also need to show the lone pairs on the chlorine atoms. Cl 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 uh, So first let's make these. Now, when we have another aluminium atom, uh, AlCl3 molecule, this something like this happens. Now, carefully observe what I'm doing. So the chlorine atoms had lone pairs, right? Let me make the lone pairs on the chlorine atoms so that it's more clear to you. Just a sec, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just made a mistake right there, which I will just rectify. Yeah, so, uh, okay, I, I forgot to make them on this one. These are all the lone pairs. So you can see that each chlorine atom had three lone pairs after bonding with the aluminium, right? So what happened was that this chlorine atom, which belonged to the AlCl3 on the left, it donated one of its lone pairs to the aluminium, right? It donated one of its lone pairs to the aluminium. And then this chlorine atom, which is on the aluminium on the right, it donated one of its lone pairs to the aluminium on the left. So now you can see that in each case, both aluminium atoms have eight electrons in total around them so they are more stable and that's why this is a more stable compound and uh, when you when you give a lot of heat to this compound this breaks to form AlCl3 because these coordinate bonds break and AlCl3 is formed so at high temperatures aluminium chloride is this at low temperatures aluminium chloride is Al2Cl6 so this is what you need to remember uh, this is called a dimer it's called a dimer because you know that the word di means two. So two molecules coming together through coordinate bonding called a dimer. AlCl3 and Al2Cl6. AlCl3, you need to remember that AlCl3 is present at higher temperatures. Al2Cl6 is present at lower temperatures because at high temperatures, Al2Cl6 breaks to form AlCl3, right? Now, if I had to represent th this through the coordinate bonding, uh, through the way we represent coordinate bonding, the conventional way, it would be this. Okay. 
you can see the arrows on this one and on this one these arrows show coordinate